everybody, and welcome to Junior Church. I'm so glad to see your smiling faces. I'm so glad to see that you are excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. We're going to have a great time together tonight. But before we get started, we have just four simple rules for you. Everybody say four. Everybody hold up your four. This is four. All right. So rule number one is to have fun. We want you to have fun in junior church because church is fun. We get together to dance and to sing to the Lord, to praise his name. It's so much fun. Number two, we need you to participate. You can't have fun if you're not participating. You can't have fun if you're not getting involved and doing everything you can. And most importantly, your friends can't see it. Speaking of your friends, make sure you go down and you like, comment, and share this video. We want to know what you're doing, where you're from, all that kind of stuff. We want everybody to see it. So share it so that your friends can see it too. All right. So rule number three is that no distractions. So if you've got toys, put them away. If you've got games, put them away. If you've got a book other than your Bible, go ahead and just put it away. We want to focus all of our attention on God tonight. We want to learn something that he has for us here tonight. And rule number four is when it's time for altar call, there's no playing in the altar, only praying. So no playing, just praying. So remember that. Rule number one is to have fun, exactly. Rule number two, participate, yes. Rule number three, no distractions. Put away everything else but God. And then rule number four, no playing when it's altar call, just praying. All right, so but before we go into our action songs, it's time for us to go over our memory verse. everybody are you ready to learn today's memory verse it is found in Matthew the sixth chapter and the ninth verse Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 and it says this after this manner therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name are you ready to learn it now let's take the beginning after this manner you're going to take your hands right in front of you. You're going to take your left hand and your right hand directly behind it. And you're going to come over and say, after this manner, after this manner, after this manner. Say that with me. After this manner. Good. The next part is, therefore, pray ye. You're going to bring your hands together, tilt your head down and your eyes closed. Therefore, pray ye. Therefore, pray ye. Therefore, pray ye. Good job. Let's put both those parts together on the count of three. One, two, three. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Good job. Now the next part. Our Father, which art in heaven. You're going to take your hand just like this, and you're just going to gently tap. Father, Father. Father, right on your forehead. Father, our Father. And then you're going to point up to heaven, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Can you do that with me? Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Let's put all of that together from after this manner. On the count of three. One, two, three. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven. Good job, everybody. Now the last line. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed, holy, praise be unto your name. So we're just going to praise the Lord. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Good job. Now let's put the whole thing together. Are you ready? On the count of three, I need to hear you loud and proud. One, two, three. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Good job. Now let's say it one more time and put the reference or where it is found on the end of it. So after hallowed be thy name, Matthew 6 and 9. Matthew 6 and 9. So here we go from after this manner all the way through Matthew 6 and 9. On the count of three, let me hear you. One, two, three. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Matthew 6 and 9. 
Great job, everybody. I am so very proud of you. Now, how about we participate in some action songs? On those action songs. Let's go ahead and breathe in and breathe out. Let's go ahead and transition now to a time of prayer. Our focus prayer today is our families. That's right. Everyone that is living under your roof or even like your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, your cousins, whoever is in your family, let's go ahead and pray for them today. All right. That's right. Our four steps of prayer are what? Hands up. What was the next one? Head up, right, eyes closed, and our outside voices. Lord, right now, Lord, we ask God, Lord, 
for you, Lord, to touch our families, God. Lord, our moms and our dads, Lord, our brothers and our sisters, our aunts, our uncles, our grandparents, Lord, everyone in our family, Lord, I ask right now, Lord, that you touch them, Lord. I ask, God, Lord, that you, Lord, be with them, Lord. Help us, God, to stay together as a family, Lord. Help us, God, Lord Jesus, Lord, to be unified, God, and to have love for one another, God, Lord, I pray. And God, Lord, keep your hand of protection over us, God, and keep us safe, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. That was good. All right, let's get ready for worship. In a minute, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and to just speak to God. And in that moment, I want you to say whatever you would tell him if he's standing right in front of you. Okay? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? God, you are worthy. You are powerful and mighty. God, I thank you for being with us today. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade. God, be with us today. God, move mountains. God, heal the sick today in this service.
God, you have been so good to me. Better than good, God, you've been great. You are powerful and mighty. God, you are the everlasting Father. You are my best friend. God, today I bring all of my faults, God. Everything that I can't fix in my own hands. Everything that I don't want to or don't need to fix. God, I bring it before you. Because you are a miracle worker. God, you make ways where there are none. God, you are victorious and mighty. You are worthy. God, you are the spotless lamb. God, you are perfection. God, I, I want to thank you for what you're doing. For what you're going to do in this service. God, I love you. everyone. Wow, I'm so glad that you could be with me here on this beautiful Sunday. Everyone say, ooh. Now say, ah. So today we're going to continue our series on prayer. Now before we get into our story or our lesson for the day, I wanted to tell you about my last Friday at school. How many of you go to school? Well, last Friday at school, I had a substitute. Have you ever had a substitute? Yeah, it's when your teacher goes away for a family emergency or they just need a vacation and they have a substitute. Well, my teacher, he was gone and so we had a substitute. Now, I'm a very good student. Are you good students? Yeah, that's what I thought. And so I was doing everything that I needed to do. I was doing my homework, my classwork. I was writing the questions and the answers. I was being very, very good. But some other people in my class, they weren't. They were being mean, and they weren't being very nice to the substitute, and they were sitting where they weren't supposed to sit, and they even had a fight, and it just it wasn't very good. But I did what I was supposed to do, and I was being good. But then that Monday when we came back to school, the substitute left a bad note. And so we all got in trouble. We all got our recess taken, and we all had to sit boy, girl at lunch, and we couldn't sit next to our friends. And even though I was doing what I was supposed to do, even though I was doing what was right, I still got punished. And I didn't like that. Have you ever been punished by a teacher for the entire class's oopsie daisies? Yeah, how many of you have been punished for something even though you were doing what was right? Me too, and it doesn't feel very good. Now, should we stop doing what's right? No, we should never stop doing what's right. Just because we get punished for our other people's mistakes and our classmates, oopsie daisies, we should still do what's right. Y you know what? This reminds me of a story in the Bible. Hmm, now who could we be talking about with prayer and someone that was doing what was right but got punished because of other people? Who could we talk about? Hmm, who prayed? Peter? Okay, I heard Peter. Yeah, Peter, but no, we're not going to talk. Jonah? Okay, Jonah's good too, but no, we're not going to talk about him. Hmm, it starts with a D and rhymes with annual. D annual. Daniel, wow, you're so good. Go ahead and put your hand up. Turn it around. Pat yourself on the back and say, ooh, I'm good. Yes, you are. So let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 6. And when we have our Bibles and we're reading the Word of God, what do we need to do? That's right, we need to stand up. Go ahead and stand up. Awesome job. And we're going to go to Daniel, chapter 6. Now, Daniel's in the Old Testament. So you have to flip backwards a little. Perfect. Chapter 6. 
And we're going to start off with verse 1. And remember, we stand for the Word of God because it's so important. See, we stand at football games, and we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and God's Word is more important than all of those. And so we really need to stand when we're reading the Word of God to show the importance and that we honor God's Word. Okay, so let's start at chapter 6, verse 1. It says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Hmm. Good job standing for the word of God. You can go ahead and put your Bibles up and sit down. Wow, my heart is so proud of you for showing the importance of God's word by standing. Oh, it's so full. Mm. So what just happened? Who is king? Darius. Darius is king, and he remembered how smart Daniel was because remember way back when he helped Nebuchadnezzar read the writings on the wall, and King Nebuchadnezzar actually put him over the kingdom too. And he said, Daniel's smart, so I'm going to put him first. He's going to be the first president. There is me in the kingdom, and then there's Daniel. Daniel's going to be my right hand, my best friend. That seemed pretty good for Daniel. But all the other people were kind of jealous of him. They didn't like that very much because they worked hard. But Daniel just got the promotion, and they didn't like that. In fact, they were a little jealous and angry. Can you show me your angry face? Yeah, they were angry like that. Let's see what happens in verse 3. It says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. And so because these people were angry and jealous, they said, you know what? Let's find any mistake that Daniel's ever made and let's bring it to the king and then we'll be the king's favorite. And so they went searching and they watched him and they watched him and they watched him and he didn't make any mistake. It says that he had no fault. So let's see what happens next in verse 5. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the laws of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. Uh-oh. Everyone say, time out. So they couldn't find any fault or any mistake that Daniel made. And so... Instead, they said, you know what, if we can't find any fault against Daniel, maybe we can make Darius create a law that's going to get Daniel in trouble. Everyone say, oh no, oh no, Darius was Daniel's friend. This doesn't sound good. You know, have you ever had someone in your life that you were doing good and what was right, but they wanted to find any mistake they wanted to hurt you yeah and that's kind of what they were doing with Daniel they wanted to find any reason to hurt him let's see if they succeed let's go to verse 7 all the presidents in the kingdom the governors and the princes the counselors and the captains they have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a peti petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree, and sign the writing that it be not charged according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. 
So he said, they said, hey, you know what? For 30 days, for 30 days, no one is going to say anything about any other God. They're just going to bring praises to you. King Darius, the great, the greatest and the mightiest and the strongest of all kings, they're not going to talk about any other person except you for 30 days. And if, and if they serve any other God, they should be thrown into the lion's den. And Darius said, hmm, yeah, that's right. I am the strongest. I am the mightiest, and I am the greatest king this country has ever seen. Yeah, I'm going to sign it. So King Darius signed it. Now let's see what happens in the next verse. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before the God as he did aforetime. So Daniel heard the decree, and he knew that he wasn't supposed to serve any other God, but every day for his entire life, he would pray to God three times a day. Every day. He was a very consistent prayer. So consistent means every day, repeatedly, every single day. So you and I are consistent with a few things, right? I'm consistent with eating lunch. Every day I eat lunch. How many of you eat lunch every day? Yeah, well, he prayed every day. So he had what we call a consistent prayer life. That means he talked to God every day. And so he was doing what he normally does every single day. Now, what do you think these men that are angry and jealous, what do you think they did? Oh, that's a very good guess. I don't know. Let's, let's read and see what happens next. It says in verse 11, Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supp supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within these 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, This thing is true according to the law of the Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, your Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, and maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Let's pause right there. So the guys, they heard Daniel praying because Daniel prayed, Every day, remember, he had a consistent prayer life. That means every day he woke up, he prayed, and every day before he went to sleep, he prayed. Every day. So these men heard him and said to the king, Hey, king, didn't you make a law that said that if anyone talks to another god for these 30 days, you have to throw them into the den of lions? He said, Yes, who is it? And they said, it's your servant, Daniel. And Darius felt a lump in his throat. And he was worried because he did make the law and says that the law can't be changed. And that was his friend, and he, he was worried. And so he was thinking all day hmm, and all night about what to do. Because Daniel was his very best president, his very best friend, and he didn't want to throw Daniel into the lion's den, but he did make a law, and it can't be changed. Everyone say, uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. Let's see what happens next. It says, Then these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law is, that no decree nor statue which the king established can be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. 
Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of the Lord's, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. So he thought about it, and the men, the evil men, the jealous men, the angry men, they came back to king and said, King, it can't be changed. Daniel disobeyed. He has to be punished. So the king said, okay, go get Daniel and bring him to me. So they went happy and excited, and they brought Daniel, and Daniel knew. Daniel went before his friend, King Darius, and King Darius said, Daniel, your God will deliver you. And then he threw him in the lion's den and rolled the stone over. Now, Daniel must have known that he was being thrown into a den of lions. How many of you would like to be thrown into a den of lions that's super hungry? No? No, me either. I'd be really scared. And I think Daniel might have been. Daniel might have been really scared. But let's see what happens next. It says, Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither his instruments were brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the mouth of the lions, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take him up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no man of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. And so Daniel was saved. It said that he didn't even have a scratch on him. He fell asleep next to the lion. Nothing happened to Daniel in the den. Hmm. Now, I'm sure Daniel was scared. In fact, even King Darius was scared. He said, oh, that's my friend, and I had to throw him into a den of lions, and the only hope we have is in God. And you know what? Daniel has a consistent prayer life. What does that mean again? Right. He prays every day. He has a consistent prayer life. So God hears him, and he has a relationship with God. That means he talks to God every day about what's going on in his life, what's going on in the world, and what he can do to please God every single day. And because of that, because of that consistent prayer life where he prays to God every day, Daniel was saved from a den of hungry lions. Now, you know this story. An angel came and shut the mouth of the lions. He didn't take the lions out. He didn't kill the lions completely. He just shut their mouths so that he couldn't eat. They couldn't eat Daniel. So a lot of times, you and I, when we're going through situations and we're going through hurts and pains and our families are fighting or there's a bully at school, we say, God, take them from me. God, I don't want to see them. God, take this whole situation. God, stop my parents from fighting. And yes, that very well may happen, and God could have completely removed the lions, but he didn't. He kept the lions there. Just like in your classroom when your teacher's gone, there's still going to be kids there that make bad decisions. But God shut the mouths of the lions. He said, yes, the people that are hurting you. Yes, the people that are making bad decisions. Yes, they're still there in the world, in your life. Yes, the situation's still there. But they can't hurt you anymore. Those lions couldn't even scratch Daniel. 
And so every day that you and I get up and we go about our days and we have situations, maybe a bully at school, God may not remove that bully from the school, but God can protect you from that bully. Because Daniel had a consistent prayer life. That means every day he talked to God. God answered his prayer. God is faithful to answer your prayer and my prayer when we talk to him every single day. So this next week, I'm encouraging you that every day before you do anything, as soon as you open your eyes, I want you to say, God, thank you for waking me up today. God, whatever you want me to do today, let me hear and let me do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Every day before you do anything, I'm challenging you to spend two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes with God, just talking to him. So let's go ahead and go to our altar. Go ahead and stand up. And your altar may be up here, over here, over here, over here. But I want to remind you that God never took out the lions. All he did was take away their power to hurt Daniel. So today, I know there's situations happening in your life. Maybe it's a bully. Maybe it's your parents fighting. Maybe it's you're just making wrong decisions. God can come in right now where you are. And he can take away the bully's power to hurt you. He can stop the bully from hurting you. He can stop your parents from fighting. God can move into your situation right now. He may not take away the threat. He may not take away the bully and move him across the country. But he'll stop the bully from hurting you. He'll stop that situation from hurting you. Because that's how great and how much God loves you. He doesn't want anything to hurt you. So whatever situation you're going through right now, I want us to go ahead and pray and say, God, I'm going to pray to you. I'm going to give you the situation. And just like the lions in the den, they didn't have the power to hurt Daniel. God, this situation does not have the power to hurt me. God, my father does not have the power to hurt me. God, this bully does not have the power to hurt me. God, this situation, money, finances, it doesn't have the power to hurt me because I believe in you. So with our hands lifted, our eyes closed, our head up and with our outside voice, God, thank you for this message today. God, I'm grateful, God, that you reminded me of this. God, just like Daniel, I have a consistent prayer life. God, yes, I make mistakes. Yes. Sometimes I forget, yes, God, I don't always feel like praying, but God, I do. Every day that I wake up, help me to pray to you, to spend at least 10 minutes in your presence, God, hearing your voice, seeking your heart for the day. And God, every day before I go to sleep, let a thanksgiving rise from my heart. God, saying thank you for the day. Thank you for moving in such a powerful way. Thank you for guiding my steps, guiding my thoughts, God. God, I'm thankful right now for the way that you're moving in the viewers' lives. God, just like the lions, they never had the power to hurt Daniel. God, you didn't remove the lions completely. You just took their power away from them. God, so whatever the viewer is going through, whether it's a bully at school, God, take that bully's power. God, that it doesn't hurt the viewer right now. God, if there's families that are being broken right now, God, moms and dads that are fighting, God, I pray that their power is taken from them, that they can't hurt that child anymore, that viewer anymore. God, I pray that you protect these viewers over this next week, God. God, that throughout this next week, God, that they continue to make the right decisions, just like we are in school. God, help us to make the right decisions that even if we get punished, God, it doesn't mean that we should stop doing the right thing. God, yes, there's bad people in the world. God, yes, there's bad things. And yes, sometimes we're hurting and we're broken and we're tired and we're exhausted. But God, you can be there in the middle of every circumstance. God, you can move in every circumstance and you can protect us. Just like you protected Daniel. God, you can protect the viewers and myself. God, so this next week, 
I pray that we can have a consistent prayer life. That means every day that we wake up, we talk to you. God, and every day that we go to sleep, we talk to you. God, because Daniel had a consistent prayer life, you protected him. And God, I pray that our prayer life can be consistent. That means every day we talk to you, we tell you about our day. God, we tell you about our hopes and our fears and our dreams, God. And that you guide our steps, that you guide our thoughts. And because we talk to you every day, God, you protect us, just like you protected Daniel. God, I'm grateful for this message. God, and I thank you for what you're doing here and in the viewer's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Your praying, continue to pray. If not, I'll see you back here on Wednesday night.